For no particular reason, we decided to benchmark Crossfire RX 470s. For the full RX 470 review using this card, you can check our separate video on that on the channel. What we got in the mail after the Sapphire RX 470, this is a four gigabyte card, was this MSI RX 470. I think it's another gaming X model. Yes, uh, and this one is an eight gigabyte card. It's clocked slightly differently. It's got more VRAM. So these aren't a perfect match in terms of what you might set up for Crossfire, but we were able to do it anyway, and I'll talk about how and why we set it up the way we did. Uh, so this test is mostly going to be focusing on the comparison between a single 470 and two 470s. We're not gonna be going through crazy, look at every single card on the bench type of thing. They will be on there, but check the full review for more information. First off, the card setup. I ran the Sapphire card in the top slot so that for games that are not using explicit multi-GPU, which is basically all games at this point, except for Ashes, uh, for those games, this is the card that will be using, used for all the VRAM. So it's a four gigabyte limit. We're basically meeting the least common denominator here. So this card is only going to be as good as the Sapphire card, despite the fact that the MSI one does have more VRAM. We're not gonna be tapping into it. Uh, so that is one note and consideration to make. They perform effectively the same as two of these because we're limited to the, the worst card, but I do want to point that out that they're not, they're not actually the same card. So that's something to note. For DX12, things are different. Ashes is a different benchmark. We'll talk about that later. First off, let's look at power draw. For power draw, we're looking at apparent power draw in volt amps as measured at the wall. This means that we're looking at power draw from the system level, so we're comparing deltas between configurations, not between actual cards. The system power draw with a single RX 474 gigabyte card from Sapphire, the Platinum Edition, was measured at about 222 volt amps under full load, with idle at about 80 volt amps. The RX 470 Crossfire setup was consuming at 404 volt amps load, or 83 idle. So definitely a significantly higher power draw, nearly actually 2x the load power draw of a single card. And this is in step with most multi-GPU setups where you see the most valid argument for why power draw matters. For FPS benchmarking, as always, a link in the description below if you want to check this article with potentially extra charts, but definitely extra test methodology explanation. You can read about the drivers we use, the system we use, all that stuff. But otherwise, the system used is on the screen now and we use that for very specific reasons you can read in the article if you're curious let's look at metro last light first metro last light at 1080p with very high quality and high tessellation posts a performance output of 109 fps average on the crossfire rx 470 cards with a 70.7 fps 1 percent low and 64 fps 0.1 percent low for comparison the rx 470 single card performs at 70.3 fps average so we're about 30 to 40 lower and that's a difference of 42.6%. That puts the RX 470 Crossfire cards at the level of performance achieved by a GTX 980 Ti, not too far from a 1070, and really close to the RX 480s in Crossfire. Interestingly, RX 470s in Crossfire somewhat invalidate the argument for RX 480s in Crossfire with this particular game, and those 480s were, by the way, tested with eight gigabyte models. And let's just look at more results before reaching a definitive conclusion though. At 1440p for Metro, we're seeing an output of 81 FPS average for the Crossfire 470s with a 56.7 FPS 1% low and 46.7 FPS 0.1% low. For a comparison, the single RX 470 performs at 47 FPS. There is positive scaling and that's not always the case. The Crossfire 480s are at 89 FPS average a difference of 9% against the RX 470s in Crossfire, and a single GTX 1070 is still outperforming the Crossfire RX 470s, though the Crossfire config does markedly outpace a GTX 1060. Our previous Mirror's Edge Catalyst multi-GPU test showed negative scaling for the Crossfire RX 480s, and we're still seeing negative scaling with the Crossfire 470s, though not as fiercely as the original Crossfire testing showed. Still, it's better to disable Crossfire for Mirror's Edge Catalyst. The Crossfire RX 470s are posting 65 FPS average with 44 FPS 1% lows and about 31 FPS 0.1% lows. For comparison, the single RX 470 performed at 65.3 FPS average, 44.7 FPS 1% low, and 31 FPS 0.1% lows. So the configurations are effectively identical 
And this has improved at least over the original Crossfire 480 benchmark where we saw really negative scaling, but it's still not positive, so you'd still be best disabling Crossfire for optimal performance. Scaling is mostly the same, or the lack thereof anyway, at 1440p, with the dual cards outputting 41 FPS average, 28 to 1% low, and a stuttery, basically unplayable 19 FPS, 0.1% low. The single card pushes 42, 29, and 19.7, so we're again effectively the same. GTA 5 was a nightmare with Crossfire. With the 16.8.1 drivers, these resolved the single RX 480's stuttering issues over 16.62. And we saw still intense micro stutter that nuked performance with the Crossfire 470 setup. The same issue is not present on a single 470 when tested, including the single Platinum Edition that we have here in our Crossfire config, but introducing Crossfire does basically break the output. And the issue, by the way, is what you've been looking at on the screen if you're curious and obviously paints a picture of an unplayable game. This is also exactly why we test for 1% and 0.1% lows because they're an accurate depiction of those swings. Here's the raw data for a few test passes, just the Crossfire cards and the RX 470 card on the screen now. You can see the variance with the Crossfire configuration is tremendous and the lows are dipping really hard when they do dip. And just to reiterate the point, we sometimes have folks comment and challenge the use of the word unplayable when referring to high average frame rates. For example, this output even at a 93 FPS average is completely unplayable, but you've got to look beyond the average because if you look just at the average, it looks actually pretty good. Looking at the low metrics, we can understand why, and it's the stutter, the micro stutter in this case, that we can show in the video capture. Regardless, the normal chart shows that 1080p GTA 5 operates at about 97 FPS average with 1% lows of 39 FPS and 0.1% lows of 24. The single RX 470 pushes 77 average, but has lows of 54 and 48, genuinely playable with the single card. Here's the interesting thing. With its high average, GTA 5 would actually show some reasonable scaling if AMD were to work out the drivers to properly support Crossfire, which will probably happen in the next update. But performance is there, it's just the frame throughput is too stuttery. We were not able to get Doom's Vulcan update running on the Crossfire cards this time. The screen just went black and it's never really been well supported anyway, but the Crossfire cards did technically run with OpenGL. I say technically because performance is mostly identical to a single card, with very slight negative scaling for the low values, though not in a substantial way or generally noticeable fashion. We're at about 75 to 76 FPS average for both the single and dual GPU setups. The same is true for 1440p, by the way, with scaling at near zero and a frame rate of 50 to 51 FPS average. The lows are pretty similar, but favoring the single GPU. The division also has negative scaling with Crossfire, and we're looking at about 64 FPS average for the CF RX 470s, with lows in the 30s, while the single card outputs 71 FPS average and a 48 FPS 0.1% low, and that's the biggest improvement here. And that's about the same as what we saw with the RX 480s in Crossfire. For positive scaling, we have to look at games like Metro Last Light and Black Ops and GTA 5, though GTA did have that micro stutter issue, so you really can't count it right now. You could also look at Shadow of Mordor and some of the other games, but we didn't retest that title here. And so we reached the same conclusion as previously with multi-GPU setups, just generally they're not that reliable for a wide berth of games. If you're playing a very specific game that does scale well, one game that you're playing regularly, then it's worth considering if it's a good value proposition versus a more powerful single card. But even then, you're still looking at the power argument. The noise argument's not so bad, depending on which cards you buy, but the power argument certainly is, and we've shown that, it's nearly a 2x increase, a 1.8x uh, if you're just doing a linear anyway, but 1.8x over the original power draw, so 222 volt amps apparent power draw uh, for a single card configuration versus the 400 plus load with the two cards. That's certainly an argument worth considering in at least some instances, maybe not everyone cares, but really uh, it's, a, it's a small market segment where multi-GPUs for gaming make sense. It's the same thing we've said for NVIDIA. This isn't exclusive to Crossfire and AMD. It's the same for SLI. With SLI 1070s, we've reached the ultimate conclusion of it's really not worth it. You're better off buying a single card. In some production applications, you could make this argument because maybe if you're doing something OpenCL accelerated, in this case, or CUDA accelerated in NVIDIA's case, the argument could be made for software like Blender or Premiere if it supports multi-GPU render then uh, you might actually see a benefit 
in that application and you could potentially get benefit in a few of the games you play as well. Just go into it knowing that you're occasionally, at a minimum, going to be disabling Crossfire. The most interesting takeaway here, if we're going to take something away, is that the Crossfire RX 470s, in some games, perform, actually in most games, perform really close in terms of frame rate output to the RX 480s. So uh, by performing as closely as they do, it almost really invalidates the argument of Crossfire RX 480s. We didn't recommend those either, just like we didn't recommend, as I said, any of the other multi-GPU setups for gaming general use cases. But if you were to buy one and you're looking at Crossfire 480s, I would say also consider the option of 470s, because you drop your price a little bit if you really want that setup. It's, uh, let's, let's kind of just assume for sake of ease that the price of these is somewhere around $190. I know it's all over the map right now. But let's assume it settles there for a semi-decent card. You're looking at something like 380 bucks for two of them. And if you do two uh, 480s, at least eight gigabyte models anyway, then you're looking at something like 500. Uh, of course, if you do the four gigabyte model, then you encounter the same thing we talked about in our 470 review, which is the pricing is so close in some instances that it's just, it's really weird. The market is strange right now. And you can watch our previous videos for that. But basically, the, the price argument is potentially here for these cards. If you really want to do Crossfire, if not, don't, because it's not worth it. Get a single card instead. Uh, that's all there is to say. So Patreon link the post roll video, as always. Link in the description below for more information, test methodology, all that stuff. Subscribe so you don't miss more content. I'll see you all next time. I'll see you all next time. <clears throat> Good night.